Hello, today with us we have Charles Nunner, the developer of the Cycle Analysis System. Mr. Nunner, thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to stop by and having a quick chat with us. I'm not gonna waste any more time, let's just dive in. So the SP500, Dow Jones, and other main indexes have fallen. The economy is in recession, and the inflation is hitting record highs. Any comments on that? Yes, to, uh, to show you another example, which we sent out more than a year ago. Uh, last year, December, we went to zero stocks, not because we really understood what could happen to the economy or there would be a war in Ukraine, just because cycles look toppy. And we're going to take a look at what we see over here. What you see over here is that if you look again at the, uh, the cursor, this says November 19th, 21. That means is then the cycle topped. It's not only the cycle that we showed like on the notes. We have three different cycles over here that topped exactly at the same time. The last time it happened, if you look to the left corner, it happened in 2007, 2008 was the same situation. Now, of course, economics, not the same situation as in 2007, but what you have to pay attention to is that when all cycles stop, or bottom at the same time in synchronization, then you have a major move. Now, we can also see what the moves are if they're not in sync, because I developed a program if some cycles are up and some cycles are down to come up with the end result. But this one I showed uh, to everybody that here you have the same situation 2007, so something bad is going to happen. Uh, as you see, the cycles continue down, but the shortest short term cycles predict a kind of a tradable low by September, October, and we could see some nice bounces, uh, which probably is going to be uh, a problem because most people will say the bear market is over and it's not. It's just going to be an up move against the bear market. So the SP500 falls 20% in the first six months of 2022, posting the worst half since 1970. What's your opinion on that? Yes, I brought the chart for S&P that shows what has been going on for the last couple of months and we will see the following thing now here you see a combination of all the cycles that's what we use for fine tuning there may be 20 cycles involved and this is the end result so what you see on the top the same thing the cycle top and if you look at the cursor you see that there could be a bounce into march next year so that's why we're looking before that we're looking in a couple of weeks for a tradable low and then you see a bounce but only into march and then the cycle goes down again what the reason is going to be i'm not sure i uh, i am not uh, an expert in fundamentals at least not more than than other people but this is how how we use the system and it is a change of 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 idea to be less interested in why things happen and know when they happen and uh, and to take a nice position and uh, we have to live with the fact that the rest is just uh, an idea that could be right could be wrong there are a lot of economists uh warren button but buffett lately sent out a, a message that says look at the economist the very few economists who really became rich and he says, why actually are the people watching the economists if they're trading stocks? Uh, economists have the other interpretation and they want to know why. And we want to know what happens and not why. Not based on technical analysis, because I wouldn't call this technical analysis. Uh, this just predicts the future based on the fact that things don't move at random. And is anything positive happening with any other assets? Yeah, yeah. I brought, uh, I brought the gold chart over here. Uh, again, there are all kinds of interpretations why gold goes up and down. This is a monthly chart, so it's a longer term chart. And what we see over here is very interesting. It hits every time the cycle tops, the gold price goes down. And when it bottoms, the gold price goes up. And as you see, the last top was in April 29. And it's getting closer to a low. Uh, the question was with all the inflation that's going on, how come gold and silver are taking off? Well, they're not taking off because the cycle is still down. And in a few weeks, uh, the monthly cycle bottoms, and then it's a nice place to go long. And finally, we find some assets that are going to be in a bull market. Last time I asked you about Ethereum, and what can we say about it right now? Bitcoin and Ethereum, any positive movement there? Well, last time you asked me about Ethereum, and that uh, I remember the first days of July, 
uh, we talked about it and it says, well, we accept, we expect now Ethereum is around 1000 and to start going up. But I also brought a Bitcoin chart to show that things also work on Bitcoin. And what we see over here is a weekly cycle chart on Bitcoin. And again, what you see is on the bottom are the cycles, on the top is the price of Bitcoin. And you see whenever the cycle top Bitcoin came down and when it bottoms, Bitcoin went up. And what you see right now is that the cursor is up until the beginning of October. So we expect to see a bounce of Bitcoin and we are more positive on Bitcoin, Ethereum until the beginning of October. And are we positive with SB and Dow Jones for the rest of the year? What's your general overview on this? Well, like I said, the Dow Jones and S&P, uh, the, the cycles are down into September, October. Then we should see a, a tradable low uh, into the first quarter of next year. And then the market should come down again, seriously. Last time you mentioned your system was different from others. Why you don't call it technical analysis? Yes, uh, I understand the questions and I will try to explain it. And I brought some examples to make clear what we really do and why I don't call it technical analysis. I brought here with me a chart of the 10 year note to explain the cycles. There are dominant cycles, so we call they have major influence and we have non-dominant cycles. And in order to make clear what's going on over here, I brought one major dominant cycles on the 10 year note. Now, as you can see, our cursor shows where the top was, and that's on the left top that says October 23rd, 20. So that's when we went out. So why did I bring this chart? If you look from top to top and from bottom to bottom, the distance is exactly the same. So you see different tops, one in 2013, one in 2017, one in 2021. And that's why now bonds are coming down and getting close to a low. Now, if you will be thinking in the fundamentals, you will try to figure out why there's a top, which usually is very difficult to do. But this makes life very simple because we're not really interested in why uh, the, the interest rates go up or down because we know based on the cycle that something's going to happen that will bring the interest rates up or down will bring the bounce up or down so this is an example to prove that things don't move at random and once you know that they don't move at random as seen on this chart you can find the cycles and in this case it's a very clear dominant cycle that shows you exactly when the top is and when the bottom is now you don't have to work with this but it takes away a lot of, of, of work and interpretation. And you don't really have to know what the future brings because once the cycle goes down, the future will bring something that after a while you will understand why bounce came down. So this is the first part of how we try to analyze markets. We don't want to know why it happens. We don't want to know that it happens and when it happens. Mr. Nenner, once again, thank you so much for taking the time and having a quick chat with us. And thank you for staying tuned in. Make sure you check out all of our social media channels to keep yourself updated and maybe support your future investment decision. I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.